Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Um, in this one, I'm going to be covering how to use ProBuilder to cut parts of an asset's uh, mesh off so that you can make a separate game object to use it to skin for your interactables. <coughs> uh, a couple of things we'll be going over is how to make the uh, separate the stick shift mesh so that you can use it with a stick shift. Um, one thing that you'll run into with uh, the assets on the asset store, even with the high end ones that cost money, is they don't have a separated game object for your stick shift. So we're going to go over how to cut that out. And then uh, I've got a knob set up in this one. I will point out that uh, I'm using VR Interaction Framework, but uh, the process will be the same for anybody making any kind of game. But it's just really beneficial to VR because you can cut parts of the mesh out uh, so that you can make them interactable. So you could cut the knobs out and make them interactable. You could cut the mirror off, make it interactable, things like that. Um, I have a girl here so that I can just impress her with my awesome Unity skills. She's actually here for scale. I always find having a humanoid model in, in the uh, in the scene helps me with scaling of the cars plus me standing up. Some people will use a cube, I use an actual humanoid. So anyway, let's see if I can get around the track. never driven a stick shift in VR. It's pretty fun. And Let's check this one out real quick. You guys don't want to sit around for the testing of the stuff. You can jump right to the Pro Builder. Good times. <laughs> All right, stick around, and we'll use Pro Builder to make some of that happen. Okay, first thing you're going to need is Pro Builder. If you've never used it before, it's great for prototyping, but I use it mainly for cutting things apart. Um, if you go to your uh, package manager. And this is going to be under uh, Unity Registry. And then it's a verified. It's actually part of Unity now, and it's free. Um, it'll show you the currently installed. When you first see it, it'll be like this. And then you can see if you need to update or not. Just go ahead and download it and then import it into your project. And then once you've got it in your project, you'll have it up here underneath Tools. So here's all our Pro Builder stuff. Okay. Next thing you're going to need is a model. <coughs> the one I'm going to use is actually a paid asset. The red card is actually free, but the process is the same, so I'm going to show you how this works. Um, let's see, where is my car? Where are you? Um, here you are. Okay. And prefab. This one with the interior. No, nope. that's the first one. Yep. Okay. This guy's actually got a <coughs> got a race car driver. Let's see. Where's he at? Where's that door? Um, oh. Prefab. Unpack. Okay. Where are you, driver? I believe I'm out. Okay. So now, as you can see, the. What the heck? That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, the car is not, uh, it doesn't have a separated mesh for the stick shift, so we're going to fix that. So if you come to the interior and come up the tools and go to Pro Builder and then open up your Pro Builder window, you're going to go to Pro Builder Eyes and then hit Pro Builder Eyes, and there we go. Now you can see we've got all these separated uh, parts now that we can work with. So you got these four tools at the top. Uh, this one's for selecting. Uh, sides this one's for vertices and this one's for faces we're going to use faces so let's come in on our wheel here you're going to hold down your control button and try not to click uh, without holding your control button once you get started because it's very frustrating uh, if you've got almost all of them and you accidentally click off and then it clears everything so be careful with that and i'll show you what i mean if i click off of it see how i lost all of them so just be cautious of that. 
We're going to select all the faces of everything that we want to separate. This usually takes a minute. I don't edit my videos, so if you want to fast forward, you can, but it should be done here in a minute. make sure that you don't accidentally select something that's not part of it like something in the background just be cautious when you're doing it because we only want the stick shift uh, part of our mesh this works with uh, higher uh, res stuff as well just make sure you get all the faces everything that you're wanting to be a separate object um, before I figured out how to do this I was actually doing the exporting into to blender to try to pull this stuff apart and then I started using this and I was like oh hey time saver um, this is also comes in handy if let's say you wanted to uh, if you wanted to kit bash cars so let's say I could cut this object out of this and then I could put you know a stick shift from a different car in it or let's say I wanted to put an engine bay in this thing out of another car or I wanted engine swaps or everything like that I could cut the meshes up and then put them together <clears throat> so a whole lot of endless options when you start getting into doing this I'm not a very artsy guy so I like things simple anything that's simple I like it Okay, I think I got it all. Let's check the top. Gotta watch out for the underneath. Yep, there's one. Always double check before you go to separate it and make sure you got the whole thing. Just don't accidentally click off of it. Okay. Alright, so once we've got all the faces clicked on, got some grass in my seat. Um, you're going to come down to detach faces. Just click detach, detach selection. And you'll see now we have another object. So now it's a separated object. And let's come over to uh, back to our interior. Okay, okay, it didn't select that. Okay, so once you have uh, the separated object and you're happy with it, uh, go ahead and close the window, then go up to tools. Go up to Pro Builder, come down to Actions, and go down to Strip Pro Builder Scripts. And that'll remove the unnecessary scripts off of the object. But now we've got a separate object, in which its center point is, see, it's always off from where it's at, which you can give it a parent. You can see now I can move it. Um, so now I could skin a, a joystick with it. And let's say I wanted this knob. Um, if I click on this, just go up, we'll do this one real quick. If I go up to Tools, Pro Builder, Pro Builder Window, Pro Builder Eyes. And now I can do this one. You can also stretch and move faces, um, then stuff around. You can, I haven't tried it yet, but you could probably use this to destroy your vehicle for damage. I'd say it'd actually be pretty good for that. Okay, so now we have a separated knob, so now just go back down to uh, detach faces. Detach. Okay, so now we have a separate object. So now we can go up to Tools, Pro Builder, Actions, uh, strip all pull, uh, strip all the scripts. So we don't have done this stuff there. Okay, so now let's say that I wanted to skin a joystick with this thing. Uh, let's go down to 
Oh, where's my PNG framework prefabs? Oh, joystick vehicle. I'm not going to go into skinning the RCK2 kit. Um, actually, any of the tutorials that I've done that show the skinning the cars go over pretty in depth on how to skin a car. Um, if you are interested, you can watch the skinning part of those videos and learn how to skin a car. Um, so basically, we just bring this down. Trying to find a happy center and then try to line it up. Now, this is a little tip for joysticks, not just for B and G, but any of the uh, if you're making your own or if you've uh, using like Hurricane or Auto Hand or anything. Um, if you've got a joystick prefab, I don't think Hurricane has one. But basically, you just make the joystick bigger until it fits the size lengthwise. Because remember, you're not going to see this joystick anyway. And then what I'll do is I'll come down to uh, just the graphics and get rid of it. And that way I can see if it's about it's about in the right spot. And then you can always adjust it later. And then when we come back into it, you can just take your, uh, take this object and make it a child of uh, change Y. There you go. So now, you can come down to uh, your graphics here and go ahead and get rid of your skin mesh. And then there's a base. Where's that at? There it is. And then you're just left with your joist with your uh, stick shift. And it's the same type of process for the knob. So let's go to uh, knob. And at this point, your joystick would be a child of the car we're not skinning an actual car so at this point it really doesn't matter but so let's bring this guy up now for the vehicles um, I found that making the knob kinematic on the uh, on the rigid body and on the gravel wall. And keep in mind whenever you put stuff like this in the car to put them on separate layers than the car. When you start dealing with rigid bodies inside of rigid bodies, it doesn't bode very well, if you will. Okay, so once we're happy with it, it's kind of centered up, then we can scale it down. So. Just kind of center it up. About like that. And bring it up. And then you can work with the uh, hand poses and stuff after you get everything set up. Okay, so once we're pretty much happy with that, let's find the uh, handle and you can bring that up and make it a child of, well, I guess it would help if I open it up and unpack it first. Unpack and then where's the knob at? You can bring that up and make it a child of I think it's just the knob to the left, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that works.
works. That should make it turn. Okay, so now on the knob, on the gravel, well, this is actually the outside. You don't want to be able to grab this and just throw it. So we're just going to disable that gravel. Now if we come down to uh, the handle, you can see that there's a rigid body on here and we're going to make that kinematic and this gravelable, we're going to switch that to kinematic. That's the best way I've been able to get them to work in a car. Every once in a while they'll lock up on you and not want to turn, but I don't really use them for anything that's super important to the operation of the car anyway. It's really just to make it interactable. So you can play with the settings, but that's the best I've come up with so far. And then from here you could send on change events and stuff like that. So. Um, Let's go to our graphics, base graphics, get rid of that, and let's see what else do we got. <laughs> Mesh render, there we go. So then we're just left with a handle. So now we should be able to pop in and see what this looks like. So let's jump into VR, check it out real quick. I forgot to turn off the colliders on the new model. So let's come down to the mesh collider and get rid of that, and this collider and get rid of that. Now let's jump in VR and see what happens. So now we can move the joystick, or the, <laughs> not the joystick, well I guess it is a joystick, and the uh, stick shift. Uh, well, my knob isn't turning. There it goes. <laughs> The whole other I'm at a weird angle. There we go. Can you see that? Okay. So you just have to play around with the settings on the knob. Like I said, every once in a while it'll lock up, but I don't use them for anything important to the car anyway. So. Okay. With that, I hope you've learned a new skill. Um, like I said, you can use it for other stuff. Anything you want to make interactable in a vehicle or actually on anything, not really even just a vehicle. Um, it just comes in handy on vehicles because you usually only get a steering wheel and the wheels. Um, you know, you could cut gauges out. You could uh, cut stuff out of other cars and kit bash it and put it together to make your own own thing. Put different seats in cars. You could cut this seat out and put seats in from another car. Um, you know, you can really modify these models using Crow Builder. Um, you could cut a hood off, put a bottom on it, and then put an engine bay in, things like that. So change the grill however you want to do it. Uh, kit bash the crap out of them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for joining.